Ready? Ooh, let's do this. Blob After Dark, Inside the Mind of a Man. Here we go. Welcome to Blob After Dark. Woo! Woo! Oh. Excited You're in to for be a treat, here. everybody. Okay, so we have had beautiful women on the show, and now we have beautiful men. So we are going to a dangerous, dangerous land inside the mind of a man. And I, I have been pledged by these two men that they will totally not hold back and tell the honest to God truth. So I've submitted questions. Women have a bunch of questions. Um, let me introduce Eric. Give it up, Eric. Eric's joining us and Devin. So this is really cool because you guys are contrasting. Eric is um, a single dude, never been married, no kids. So like the ultimate bachelor, if you would, would you say that? At times, yes, I would say that. <laughs> and then Devin has been married before. Yes. And you're in a loving, committed relationship. He's yes. got a newborn. Yeah, So dude. he is in the thick of it. So two diff different perspectives that I'm excited to dive into. Yeah. Okay, so... For you guys, I'll start off with something that's pretty interesting that everyone has a different take on. What are, as far as red flags go in relationships, because I feel like from like when our parents, like my parents have been married 50 years and it's just, it's a totally different scene right now. So what do you guys, in terms of red flags, think stand out when you, when you first meet somebody? I mean, are you quicker to say, because I mean, I know you've had a relationship and then you met the one and say, you know, you've had right. multiple experiences. So like, what is something that's just like no dice and like cut bait, move on, or that you wish you would have known before? I'm curious to know what your your take is on this one. So mine, I is, know mine is really when you start off and you meet someone, uh, how they use technology and are they being interesting shy or um, shady about it? You know, that they're protecting their phone or that when they get up to go to the restroom, you know, they make sure they take it with them. Or that is one of your big things because you've mentioned is. that many times before. I've mentioned before. that before. Um, and you know, do you bring your phone to the restroom? Heck no. I do okay. it as um, just to state it. Like, I have nothing to hide and leave my cell phone out. Like, here's my up. code. It's here's Here the it phone. Is. Like a badge of honor almost. Like, yep. you can look at it if you want. After our first 30 days, she had the code to my phone. And when I get up, I leave it sitting out. If we run somewhere and I get out of the car, it stays in the car. I don't Now, if she, if you come back and she's, like, looking in it, does that make you mad? Do I you don't feel care. I, okay. If she wants to answer a couple emails while she has it, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, I love that because most men are super secretive with their phone. I think there's a fine line between secrecy and privacy, I right? Agree. I was gonna say I feel like the the two are de the two are separated. What do you say like, about that? Well, uh, I mean, as tough as I open my phone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, privacy is something that, like, I feel like uh, every, every every person deserves. Like, right. guy, right. girl, doesn't really matter what I it agree. is. I yeah. think privacy, 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 in some sense, is everything that um, you know someone deserves. But when it really boils down to it, I think that you know secrecy that that that's that's where people get themselves in trouble. Okay, can if, I? If you're doing something that you feel like you have to hide, which right. is most of the time why people are guarding their phone, yep. or if they are. You know, keeping it flipped up under side down so that yep. way it doesn't light up with somebody's name that they don't want someone to see or, uh, you know, uh, trying to, you know, constantly hoard over their phone so it can't be like viewed. You know, obviously that that in some sense is kind of like a red flag. I mean, that's what everyone says. It's like an illusion of options these days because people think they have relationships with people they don't actually have relationships with, you know, because they online. Right. Or they 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 follow someone every day. So they feel like they know them. They feel like they're attached to them. It's flirty, flirty. And it's like but then. In the actuality, I, w I just never understand men in particular and some women as well. But like, why would you risk like your beautiful woman, your family or whatever? It's like talk to some chick that you've never even met it's not and everything's going to blow up in your face. It's like, but men it. do it all the time. Um, and I hate when they turn it on the woman because they're just looking for something else. I'm like, why don't you focus on what you got going on? You know what I, I mean? I just call it fishing. You know, yeah. guys that are out there that they're fishing for what's next or what else is out there. Yeah. And, um. You know, they'll play it off like, oh, it's harmless, but I, I mean, let's be real. There, it, There's an intent to it or they wouldn't be doing it. And that's how it all starts, right? It's, that's exactly how it Because, I mean, even my girlfriends, and I'll say, they'll like, oh, I follow this guy. Then he followed me right back, and that's how it starts. So, like, when your significant other is like, oh, it's nothing. I just followed. No, that's giving someone attention, being like, hey, yep. hey, yeah. you know? I yeah. agree. Oh, you do agree. Okay, I like this. Okay, so a lot of guys, too, and I overheard a conversation 
and it was a dude who a single man and he was like hey he was gonna go on a date with this chick he wanted to keep it casual they've been talking and go to get coffee not a big investment not like dinner not like an evening right. whatever so he she wanted him that he wanted her to walk and meet halfway and she was like uh, i'm wearing heels i don't want to walk and was kind of maybe expecting him to send an uber or to do something more chivalry be a gentleman and so then they were both like ah forget it and like gave up on the whole date so like it's interesting to me. Obviously, they weren't that deep into each other. But, like, what are your views? Because nowadays there's so many things online about 50-50, who pays, you know, dusty dudes versus provider men or all these things. So, like, what do you, what is your take on that? Because I feel like women do have high expectations, but then a lot of guys now are just lazy. And instead of, like, going after that one quality woman, they'll just like, oh, well, you know, I could have lower quality, but I won't have to do as much and be lazy. I think 50 50s. um I've got a pretty good take on this one. I think it all comes – I think the the facade of the whole 50-50 relationship has been kind of pushed really far um, – uh, what would I say? Like it's just skewed? It's been skewed yeah. heavily because I think 50-50 what really what it boils down to is comes down to the responsibilities. Okay. I mean, every relationship – Especially with a newborn. I'm sure well, you know about sure. that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But the thing about it is it comes down to the responsibilities. Like a lot of people say now 50-50 is like, hey, you pay this time, I pay next time. That might not always be the case. I mean sometimes in relationships one get person makes more money than the other. And it doesn't always be the guy. Like, sometimes it can right. be the girl. And, um, you know, it's sometimes uh, – it's always good for you know a girl to kind of put her, her put her more effort forward uh, sometimes than the guy does, but but you know as long as it's reciprocated, obviously you know it's fifty fifty at that point. But I feel like the the boy what it really boils down to for a successful relationship, the fifty fifty comes from the responsibilities. Like every relationship, usually when you have some kind of family dynamic, all those responsibilities stack up on a list. Yeah, that's right? true. So, you know, if you always fi are constantly relying on, you know, your partner to, like, take up 75% of that, guess what? They're going to get fucking tired of that. Yeah. Yep, They're going to get tired of that really, really quickly. And then suddenly it becomes that dynamic of, like, well, why are you upset about it? You do so good at this kind of stuff, you know? And then the You're so great at you're so unloading the dishwasher. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> you should always I don't do know it. where the plates go. <laughs> Bullshit. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like, that doesn't really, exactly. that's not real. The, the, the reality of it is, is like I feel like most really successful relationships, and I think the relationship that I have right now, the reason why we work so well is like we are 100% a team. It does not matter who pays what bill. It does not matter who takes the kids to school. It does not matter, you know, who cooks dinner that night. It doesn't matter who sweeps or mops the floor. Like as long as the jobs get done, sometimes I have more free time, I can knock it out. Sometimes she has more free time, she can knock it now out. Now how do you communicate when someone's not ma per se pulling their weight? Or you feel like, okay, I've been doing like pretty much everything for – a long time. My girl and I kind of have a, 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 a good, I'll, I'll call it a healthy sense of humor because we'll give each other shit about it. Okay. <laughs> like you'll joke, but you're serious? But yeah, we'll joke, but we're serious. It's okay. kind of like the thing like, hey, you know, like, you know, wh wh why aren't you doing this or something along, along right. those lines? Right. Like you it's, saw the gas tank was empty and just left it on empty. Yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah, yeah. Essentially. But it's one of those things where I think, you know, it comes down to the dynamic you set. When you when you get into a relationship and if you really have somebody that's truly on your team. That's the team. I mean, that's yeah. someone who has your back. That I has think that's your everything. back. No right. matter what. That's, I feel like, what most men are looking for nowadays. It's not so much as the uh, – the the looks the money it, they're, they're looking for peace but here's the problem i say men uh, and i'm just gonna say always say i'm looking for peace but like they don't provide it so if they don't have a woman's back and they're doing shady stuff or they're not making her feel comfortable like they're like i just want peace i just want you know sex five times a day but it's like <laughs> what are you doing you're stressing you me out to that? you're yeah. shady behind my back you're not on my team so i'd be like then they still expect peace and i have a problem with men who call out women for not like for bringing drama when they're simply it's because of their behavior the woman would have nothing to say and she'd be happy and like let's go well in my experiences from what i've seen is most men that act that way have a really hard time taking accountability for their actions yeah and yeah. ego that's really it's, yeah. it's mostly all ego i mean a lot a lot of times when guys are kind of complaining about oh why why are you trying to bring all this drama into my life you know most of the time it's it's because your you're behavior causing it, right? yeah and then women just get honestly sick of it and they just check out yeah. so what's your take <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's I got have, a lot to say no i have a few uh yeah. so as far as the 50 50 you know i i don't know if that's a, an, a measurable or a thought you know it's just to me it's just doing their contributing a, a little bit being um, a professional male I do well at what I do and I don't 
I take pride in that, being able to afford and, and do that. So just the gesture from time to time to pick up a lunch or a coffee, it, it's not about the dollar value to me. It's the effort or the, you yeah. know, wanted to do that. And that's, that's what matters to me, the things that, you know, I don't have to mention it, that she'll just, oh, here, let me get this one. You know, I, I don't mind picking up the dinners and whatnot. Like, I feel like that's part of my job as a man to do that. Would you feel weird? Because I know you're, you were raised super well and you have a wonderful mom and a sister with women. So would you feel weird if, like, a woman did pick up the tab? Absolutely and would, would you not. Feel like I, it's 2024. I think one of you guys <laughs> made that comment before we got going here. And to be honest, some of the, one of the best lines I'd ever heard, actually, a dear friend of mine, um, I'll leave her nameless, but back younger when we were single, we've always just been friends. We've never dated or anything like that. But she insisted on always picking up the check on the first date. I'm like, why well, why is that? Is that? Yeah. And she goes, because then if the guy picks it up that I owe him a second date because he bought or, you know, that there's some undertone of they owe the other person, she – like, I'll just take care of it that way. There's no, I don't owe him anything. I, if I don't want to see him again, then it's, there it is. I paid. I'm the one that was in the loss. And I'm like, that is a great way, especially for a woman. Um, you know, I think guys could probably maybe subconsciously feel like that, that they picked up the first one. And then, oh, she owes me a second date. Um, yeah. I, that's never been my style. Yeah. Hell, you can tell in the first 10 minutes if there's going to be a second date. <laughs> I was yeah, going to say, true. usually you know pretty quick. <laughs> I tell right away. I, I feel like the woman, though, personally, I'm old school, though. I like a gentleman who would never let me pay for a first date. I'm like, if he yeah, asked me for no the way. date, but, and then I think Bingo. she sets the precedent of then he might expect her, like, every other time to pay. It depends what, I guess, she wants to do, but I don't know. Yeah, I, really? I like a real, like, manly man. I mean, I don't know. I'm one of three girls, and so my dad set the bar very, very high, but I like a man who opens a door. I like a man who puts, you know, and, it shoes my card away if I, you know what I mean? I don't oh, know. Yeah. I appreciate well, but that. I like, I'm sorry. But I like lunches and cookies and smoothies, like little things or like little presents and stuff. Like, yes, of course. That's gestures a nice like that. break for a guy, in my opinion, that the dinner and all that, I don't mind picking that up, especially if I'm the one that's going to invite her to a nice place. Yeah. And there's no way I'm going to expect that. <laughs> right. Yeah. But on a Saturday afternoon, if we go grab brunch or something like that on a Sunday and walk somewhere and yeah. she wants to pick it up, okay, it costs 12 bucks. Big yeah. deal. But it, the gesture uh, to me is what goes a long way. I like that. Yeah. I like that. I think effort, obviously. Yeah. If you can see that someone's putting in effort, no yes. matter what aspect it is. Music care. Yeah. Yeah. Or there's in, there's mutual interest. There's mutual interest. <laughs> yep. I think that, yeah. I agree. You can definitely tell when there's not. <laughs> so let me ask you guys this. How do you know when is the right time to walk away? Because I feel like there's so many relationships, and then if you've had – many that you've had to walk away from and we all have in our life. But how do you know, how does a man know? Because they say women mentally check out first and then they leave. And then men, men, this is what I was reading, um, that they will just stay until, and like, and, and almost have you on, not on the back burner, but it, you don't ever want to be too convenient for a man because you're his convenience that he can always, you know, come back to, or he, they have that one and then they might fish around and they want to keep you here. And then they, that's why, you know, women need to stop letting these dudes back. Cause you're just, you're going to waste five, 10 years of your life. Do you want to be a girlfriend when you're, you know, now when you're like, if you're in your prime, you need to stop letting men, you know, commit. When is it kind of like, I know men don't respond to ultimatums, but like when you say shit or get off the pot, like, yeah. What does a man I do? I definitely don't respond well to ultimatums. Yeah, no, and no, no men do. But I think what what should a woman do then if she's with a man that's like, are, you're wasting my time? Is this happening or not? Just cut it off. Cut it off. I was gonna say, I don't think it's, I don't think it's wrong for a woman to to, to I mean, stage that question, like, where was this going? See, I think let me ask Eric because this is this is good to know. So men obviously don't like ultimatums, but what should a woman do then? I mean, the simple question, just where, like, what's What's the plan here? What are we doing? Are, are we and if he has no plan, like, let's just. Uh, <laughs> I mean, hard conversations are hard yeah. to have. That's why, the, why they're car called hard conversations. But y you just got to do it. And I'm the last person to sit here and lecture or, you know, tell somebody about doing it because I've never been the best of that in my life. That um, the convenience, I won't admit to that personally, but it does <laughs> make sense. That yeah. It, you know, people naturally can go that route and not realize that they're doing it, especially that it's noticeable. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a very hands-on committed person, but you can tell when I'm checked out. Yeah, you, absolutely. I, I mean, you, you can just tell. So um, I'm not sure I'd be the best to give advice on when to pull the plug. 
but you I've are never the best. been the, the right time at that. You are the best though because you're one of you're like a dude. You're like an alpha dude who's like, don't control me, don't tell me what to do. But then if a woman is like, hey, like, you know, the old adage, why buy the cow when you get the milk for free? Like, what should a woman do then? Because they don't want to like smother the guy. We're not trying to control you, but I'm not trying to waste my time here. Seven years in, and you never do anything, and then you marry someone five months later because you're just ready then. I'll you know, withhold the intimate part of your relationship and see where it goes. You'll know right away where their mm. mindset is if that gets held back then i think you'll get a good understanding of what their interests are what's the longest you guys have never ever gone without it like from the start of a relationship <laughs> 30 <laughs> minutes <laughs> that's not true my then dude. we're gonna top that today because that's gonna be <laughs> my dude the you should have broke the fourth, fourth wall it just so like wonder he went to the restroom out. before we started this podcast I'm like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 30 minutes so i i don't know if there's a, a without <laughs> nice i um it's nice when the studio's chuckling at me no i man i it's not more than a couple of days that's for sure but there are circumstances you know people are traveling or <laughs> other reasons that may uh yeah prohibit that but i'd say in a healthy relationship it should be definitely more often than not okay are you talking about like from the very start of or just like yeah in a relationship like i'm just wondering yeah or what do you guys i mean all men want like all day every day but i'm like what's like that's not factual. Yeah, you have to be real. That's not, factual. that's not factual. I mean, I mean, no one's gonna complain. Yeah, I was gonna like, say, do I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, we're not gonna complain about that. But I would say, uh, I mean, the reality of it is, is I, at least for me, I guess I'll have to speak for myself. I guess I, I always go for a more of an emotional connection. Just cause if I can't have that emotional connection with a person. You're never going to get it. That, that is so time. interesting because they say women, you know, they like to make love with that emotional connection, right? But men can, like, screw anything that want and then come back and be like, ugh. Like, it's just yeah. total physical. So, I but, but, but it's not the case. I'm sensing a lot of generalizations about men today. <laughs> no, but, I, but that's, that's why, what, I'm, that's why yeah. I'm asking you guys because yeah. I want to know what's true and what's not. Because that's why they say when women cheat, it's emotional and they're invested and they're more likely to fall in love with someone because they're like, oh, my gosh. And when men do it, I mean, they can step out and just be like, oh, one, you it's know. It's purely sexual. It's purely sexual and then go back. But it's a cop out. But if, yeah, but if they do have an emotional connection, because I obviously believe in emotional cheating as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. real. And I think that can do just as much damage. I think it's actually worse. I think if someone's going behind your back for a year, like, dee, 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 ooh, and sending, and that's, I mean, let's talk about, like, infidelity, because I know you've experienced that. So how did you overcome that, Devin? I mean. Did you know, or did you really have no clue? You don't have to go in, like, total detail if you don't want to, but, like, know. but to help people, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the reality of it is, is, like, I guess I was just being trusting, more or less, and, like, I relied heavily in the conversations that I had. And yeah. Um, you know, what, the, what it really boils down to, the bottom line of it, I was always trying to give a benefit out of the doubt, you know. Nobody's perfect. And I think the biggest thing when it comes down to, like, cheating is, you know, there's always two sides to every single story, no matter what it is. Whether there's, uh, you know, someone who's – you're always going to have the paradigm of being the bad guy in somebody's story. And so someone's always going to use that in some way of a justification to do what the things they did. You know, I'm, I'm, I can honestly speak to the fact that I'm not perfect. There's probably things that I could have done, communicated, treated, done better that may have may or may not have led to a different end of the scenario. Who knows? But the reality of it is, is you know, um, you always have to kind of like give that benefit of the doubt. I mean, if you're with that person, you got to trust them. If you don't have trust, then really, where are you going with your relationship? Can that's, you ever rebuild exactly it? it? Do you guys think it's a case to case scenario? Yeah, I, I that's such a case to case scenario. That's true. I wanted to, yeah, you know, I wanted to rebuild it. Um, at first, it was just you know, but how do you stop that trigger of like then every time she's going out or every time she's on the phone? I mean, that you don't want to drive yourself. What's li what's living like that? Like, and you know, I, th I think that's I think that's 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 your bottom line. Like, yeah, if, if like if you can't let that go, yeah. If I can't trust a person when they're going out, then there's no relationship there. I take pride in that. I don't. I think for every – guys have their guys' nights. Girls need to have their girls' nights. Oh, yeah. Let them go out and do it. And I promote that for two reasons. One, I you know, for her to keep contact in those relationships with her girlfriends is important. And then secondly, for every girls' night, that means it's a guys' night as well. So <laughs> He's like a kid and you get this and I get well, this. I think it's no, important. It is important. I think it's – you know, there's – I'll <laughs> be honest and admit I'm not that hip – of a person when it comes to certain topics and for her to have those conversations with uh, folks, 
you know, that have the same interests that I, oh. you know, I'm not that good at, then go out and do it. Even if it's guys, like I don't, I'm not a territorial, you know, one of those guys. If you have to be like that, then I, I just don't think that's something, uh, a good standard for a, rela- a long-term relationship. And I think it's like hot when a guy goes out with it, like goes golfing with his buddies or goes to, you know, do something like, I, I'm not like a big fan. Of, I don't think strip clubs or anything like that are productive. I think that just causes <laughs> problems. So I'm not, a, I wouldn't advocate for that. But like, if you go with, the, if you send your guy with his buddies and he gets to be like, have fun and guy time, then he comes back better, more relaxed. And yep, he's had a yeah. good time, something healthy. You know yeah. what I mean? I get enough guy time. So sometimes, you know, for work that you get a lot of that uh, camaraderie. I, w- I work in a male dominated industry. So there's a lot of testosterone all yeah. the time so it's um you know it's kind of nice offset that you get enough of that guy time that makes you want to go home and and have the other side as well now do you guys really let me ask you this because men like so a lot of women need a man who can kind of put them in their place and handle them give if, if a woman's a lot right if she brings a lot to the table do men want that because i feel like they say they want that but then they have a hard time handling that or do they want a more submissive woman who's like more quiet and just meek and like both I was gonna say, I, but you can't have. Both. <laughs> I, 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 I was gonna say, I think most men are gonna answer exactly how Eric said both. Like, do you like, want a more vanilla ever, woman that's just like more really peaceful, or do you want someone that's like kind of more exciting but like will be a pain in your ass? I don't know. I, I, I like the fire. Man. <laughs> I love that. Like, I chose that's, nothing he's like but toxic, chaos. toxic. I, do. I love the fire. I, to me, it's all about timing. It's because it carries over into the bedroom. That's There's what I like. There's a lot of that. truth to that. Yeah. And I, but it's all about timing and approach. Like being put in my place. Yeah, we. I, give enough reasons to to be put in my place but it's behind closed doors when it's just her and I or you know to have that conversation and not call me out in front of friends or coworkers or a client or something like that yeah. so I you know I those conversations need to be had it's just a matter of how you approach it and yeah. don't put me on blast in front of my friends or go to social media and vent about our problem like that's not I'm not on board with that but I both is I think yeah. it's a, a mix of both. I mean, things. sometimes I think you have to do some stuff like that to get his attention. If he's not listening to you and you've said 6,000 times, to just yes. like, okay, and he's gaslighting you and be like, this is normal. And you're like, no, it's not. Yeah. I've had it with your shit. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, how would you guys view a high-value woman? Like, who in your eyes is a, what would be, like, the epitome of a high-value woman? Which I assume most men want because you don't want any, you know, something everybody else could have, right? Absolutely. Well, for me, it's not alluring. Um... I have a high value woman. Yeah, I can honestly say Describe that. Describe her. I've, Let's see. Yes, I love this. How do you answer after somebody <laughs> said that? Like, what do you I say to that? Well, so, what are her characteristics, and how, like, how did you? I mean, so land this beautiful woman. Oh, geez. Well, I mean, I won the lottery somewhere, but as far see, as this is how every man should talk about his <laughs> um, lovely. I mean, I, I got. I, I I can honestly say I got lucky. Um, and she was there. You know, my whole life didn't really know it. You know, I met her when I was like nine. Aww. So, yeah, but I know she is probably the safest place for me to be the best version of myself that I never thought I really could be. And I think that's probably one of the most redeeming things as a person like for myself that, you know, has come through some tougher relationships and some like hard times and, um, you know, Sometimes somewhat confused about you know what I want in my life and you know where I want to see things go and like every every guy goes into the ring thinking they know what they want right but mm-hmm. then you know you get hit in the face <laughs> sure you know, li- yeah. life life comes after you and then life's not linear people mistake uh, that they're like I should have more money I should be higher that you know it's just like this it's yeah. like you, the end yeah right you learn as you go and so you know she I, I guess I would say like you know she's she's motherly she's she's stern she's uh, she can be just. She's got a great sense of humor, just as much as she can be as direct as uh, as I as I as I need. And like when I say that, like you know, she's like the whole package. I guess when I was starting to ex- like s- talk about her, I, she is kind of both. She I has that. that. She has that ability to like sit on one side of the scale and then flip right back over the other when she <laughs> needs to. So she's the total package. She, she is. Yeah. yeah, she really is. You know, I could not have asked for. Uh, a better mother for my son that's for sure that's awesome he's, he's See, got a that's incredible i'm like this is a moment yeah, i love this and come in i love he's this. got he's got he's taken care of that's for sure i love this okay eric for you uh can you repeat the question <laughs> please <laughs> i want to make this sure i'm hearing this correctly i want to make sure i'm hearing this correctly what is your definition of a high value woman i mean I, i'm not obviously married or kids but you know really to co-sign you know Really, a lot, a lot. Seven sediments. Yeah, what you hit on, you know, 
obviously the trust and a person that that has kind of a diverse approach to life that you know they're not just rigid set in their ways and um, you know compromise to me i always say trust loyalty and compromise are what drive you know a relationship and if you don't have all three you know it can really put a lot of strain trust is the big one and mm -hmm. compromise i'm usually pretty good at getting my way so it's nice <laughs> for somebody that um, has that similar personality um, i to me someone that keeps me on my toes someone that matches my energy and drive and ambitions i yeah. um, have met with a business life coach for years and she pointed out and it I, it was so obvious but it made so much sense of um you know you need somebody that matches what you're doing that keeps you pushing to want to be better oh, yeah. Absolutely. and that's my value you know somebody that's not home at four already you know on the couch watching television or whatever i i live a very uh, active life i'm mm -hmm. yes always it, out uh, and about you on gotta, the go well, you got yeah. i mean it's yeah. for um it's just my personality and lifestyle and for for me to be in a relationship that will work they need to have a good chunk of that in them as well you know i, I don't expect it to be full tilt because i can probably be a little too much for myself anyway but <laughs> yeah I, I think they you know somebody that has a lot of those you know same ambitions and goals can i ask you something personal does Do marriage scare you no, because I feel not. like these days, especially now, <laughs> <laughs> and you've been married. Are you scared to be married again? Because you're with your partner, but you guys aren't married. Just because yeah. I feel like, you know, from back in the day, like I use my parents as an example. That's what you did. Right. It was like, but now men are, they want to just, uh, a lot of men do, they see nothing, no benefits of being married. And so I'm just wondering if it, it what, I, I don't what agree gives. With that. There's a lot of benefits to being married. I mean, such the, as this the situation that I feel like most guys are saying that like there's no benefits of being married is because usually when you get in so a comment like that it's because someone believes they're gonna get into a marriage and they're already looking for the finish line they all they already see the finish line so like when you hit that divorce button and then you're left with half or you lose the kids or you lose the house and all those things they say like that's that's the aspect that you know right uh, it's, it's not a win for men but um I feel like that you when you get into marriage like it, the, the exciting part about it is like when you step into that realm and you know you're spending the rest of your life with this person like it's you're like all in you're all in my thought process is like the benefits is like what can you build together you know if you really got yeah. that if you got that team member and that 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 50 50 person if you if you have that person that's like got your back no matter what because you're gonna you're gonna fuck up yeah. she's gonna fuck up right but if you really got each other's back like what can you really build together and like we're in this yeah yeah, yeah. like is it is it just a family or could you build a business i or feel like the only this is something that a guru says and this is interesting that men won't do they won't do it until anything until they have to do it and then they'll do anything do you guys agree with that like they won't do what you ask they won't do they will like half ass or give you breadcrumbs <laughs> until it's the end and then they risk seeing you with another dude you moving on and then they'll do it. Oh, it makes it easier, I think, to separate. It's yeah. Then, well, it, why didn't they care before? And if it's the fact that they're losing you, then that makes them care. Well, then, I mean, that's an easy decision on the woman's part. Right. I, in my opinion. But yeah. Um, yeah, I've never really been in that situation. So every relationship's different. That's and true. And it's tough. And there's a lot of factors and variables that go into that. And, um, you know, timing's big on that. And. So what timing wise, what do you mean by that? Well, I guess to go back to your question about am I afraid of marriage? Absolutely not. Um, I mean, I don't I think some guys are um, feel like they need to be married more than others. You know, that oh, they're yeah. afraid of being alone. But I think both men and women feel that way. I do fine by myself. So it's never been yeah. um, I had a five and a half year relationship where to the point it was time to either get married or or engaged and break up. And we took the path of breaking up. It was tough, but it was. It right was it an ultimatum situation, or it was it just you both were like? It was time to make tough decisions, and um, she was mature beyond her years, and great Catholic family, like old school fa or old fashioned type family, and it sure. was, you know, that was like the thing to do when you're 24 is you had to graduate college, you had to go and engage and get married. Well, friends that were doing that, you could just tell how it changed them or the effect on the relationship. Yeah, and. Some of them that are divorced now, you know, I, I, I plan on doing it one time and one yeah. time only. And at 40 years old, if I've made it this long, you know, I really need to <laughs> be sure. Well, I need to be sure yeah. on what it is. And, um, you know, after that relationship, I just went career mode yeah. until I find 
you know, that person that makes me can't, you know, function without, without thinking about it, without, you know, living without them. Yeah. And it's, you know, timing, you can meet the right person, but if it's the wrong time, you know, that you can't force it or. There's know, something to be said by that, too, because I feel like when you get married in your 20s, which is very is very Midwestern, I will say, um, then you build a life together. Like a lot of people don't have prenups when they're 20 because they don't have any. They're building it together. Right. But when you're, you know, in your 30s, early 40s, it's like, OK, well, now I'm so set. Like a lot of people are set in their way. So it's sometimes harder to mesh because they're they can be independent. They Absolutely. don't need you. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So it's like. Okay, and then there's so many options, and there's so they've been now they have baggage, and now they might have kids, you know. So it's everybody's like it's hard, baggage, but everyone's yeah. got. But Agreed. I feel like you get a better person because I feel like they're. I can tell someone who's never been through a trauma in their life. I like a, yeah. I like someone with a little trauma. I like yeah. because they're they've like reflected on themselves. You know, if right. you're so green and you're like oh, it's like oh they have a lot to go through before they're like yeah. have reached this person. And like you always want to be growing and evolving, right? That's yep. super important. It's a balance, I think, yeah. as we get older and the more. Um, you know, our careers progress, you're around other high level professionals and yeah. you seem to be attracted to those type of people right. back to, you know, my comments earlier, people that match your energy yes. and drives in that. But as to your point that as we get older and become more successful on our own, that those lifestyles can be tough to mesh because they have success in doing it their way right. or versus my way. And, you know, sometimes it, that could be tough to find that middle ground and compromise, but for the right person, you know, you d it's worth it. It's so. worth it. What do you guys wish that women knew? Like, what's something simple about dudes? They're like, I, women just don't get this. Like, I will say men just need to, like, tell women they look beautiful and make them laugh. Don't. And, like, like just keep it, like, just be, you know, and focus on your woman, you know? Don't listen to any sentence that starts off, why are all men? And then whatever oh, comes okay, after that's that. Oh, okay, that's good. Because we're not good. all the same, and. I joked with it, but I think, you know, people this day and age for how everything seems to be blown out of proportion or, you know, use generalized comments. So we're not all the same. I think you'll know when you meet somebody and yeah. I feel like in business, you can tell right when you meet someone, if it's going to be a good deal or, you know, they're trustworthy to work with and relationships, I go the same way that you can tell and right away if they're going to be a good person. Do you agree with that, Devin? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I do. I feel like I'm a pretty good read of people. Yeah. So, like, I feel like I, when I when I sit down in front of somebody, if I was on a date or whatnot, I can know pretty quick whether or not this is going to be This is going to happen or, or not. I, that kind of goes back to, like, the red flags. Like, yeah. uh, on a first date, I think the worst thing that you can possibly do on a, on a first date is trauma bond. <laughs> can you do that on a first date? Uh, is uh, what? Trauma bond. Basically, let me put out all my bullshit on the table for this day so like you can accept people it do not. that yeah oh wow yeah <laughs> lucky me yeah I, mine's punctuality like I, oh yeah he is a very she punctual is 40 minutes late on a first date game seven of the yankees in the alcs years ago and i literally i it um <laughs> i'm like by the time it was 30 minutes like don't even bother don't even bother coming yeah oh my god that's hilarious Man, that's awful yeah that's uh, like yeah. How should a woman express herself? Because obviously no no woman wants to be a nag. No dude wants a nag. But like if you <laughs> how should you express yourself that men actually like get that penetrate and they'll actually do correct a behavior or do do what they said they were going to do. If you're just actually someone to, you know, but without nagging, like what would work? <laughs> oh man, I'm you gonna def me. I'm defaulting no, to him. Because I was gonna say we both look at each other. It was because like because men hate nagging and women. No women wants to well, be a nag, guys but like nag as much as women. I, do. Yeah, they okay. do. That's yeah. the guys hilarious nag part. As much as women do. That's yeah. like yeah. I I don't. To be honest, I. How do you um, respond the best? Like if 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 you said you do something you haven't done it yet, and she wants to remind you, or like you know you did something you said you weren't gonna do. Like how what. What's the approach? Shit, <laughs> I I that would actually <laughs> work. This is a, I just talk to me. I the raising the voice and all the theatrics and hand motions and all that doesn't get does any not. further with me. Exactly, uh, it doesn't. I'm not an that's emotional. That's why I'm asking. Guy. That's why we're asking these men. Just so sit like, down and yeah. have a conversation. Look each other right in the <laughs> face and say it. I, you know, not via text unless it's you know that's the only way you can go at that point. But right. if there's something that important sit down and talk to me like an adult the theatrics and the loud voice and the stomping around i'm not stubborn that i'd probably do the opposite just to piss you off even more dude, i was just getting ready to say that like i'm a pretty <laughs> stubborn dude like okay. if you're, if you're gonna yeah if you're gonna if you're gonna just try to raise that meter up to 10 just to get in a reaction out of me i'm 
I'm yeah. literally just going to give you zero. So what should we do? Sit down and just have a soft talk. That's probably. You know, <laughs> come down, Eric. I think we need to talk. Yeah, you should do that. Okay. No, no. You're uh, like, I, you guys. I don't know. You're I like, my know. woman should come down to lingerie and be like, hey. That you know that thing you've asked me to do ten times? That doesn't Dude, sound that like a terrible that? idea. That would <laughs> definitely get my attention. And I'm sure attention. I could yeah. probably. I like I, that. I would yeah. respond well to that. That's a great idea. Thank you. Okay. Like, we'll get that up there. <laughs> Perfect. You're going to add that to your, like, your checklist so, like, for your first yeah, Well, this is being recorded. I'm going to have to go back and be like, this is what she said would work. So We're going to try this. Okay. <laughs> We're going to play a game because sure, I love games. Yeah. We're going to play Mary Kiss Kill. So uh, I'm going to give you three. This is just a brief fun game because I just want to get to know you guys a little bit more. And inside the mind of our men. Are you guys ready? Okay. Mm-hmm. So you got to say, who would you marry? Who would you kiss? Who you, who you would kill? Here's our first batch. You ready? Taylor Swift, Miley Cyrus, Cardi B. Oh, fuck. Who would you marry? Who would you oh, kiss? God. Who would you kill? Oh, that's simple, man. I, um, <laughs> that's so that one's simple, dude. He's like, that's so fast. Cardi B. I'm not even sure if I know exactly who that is. So <laughs> okay. I'd say that one's probably gone. Miley, okay. Ma- Miley, Miley Cyrus. Miley Cyrus. Yeah, sure. I'd kiss her. Uh, I would definitely marry Taylor Swift with no prenuptial agreement <laughs> involved. <laughs> He's like, then I would get married. I was gonna yeah, exactly. Yeah, He's like, no. no. Okay. So yes, I would definitely get married. I was gonna, I was gonna say the same thing. For, uh, the same thing was on, on those ones. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm actually, in line with you on that. Okay, this one might be a little more hard. Ready? Yeah. Kim Kardashian, Martha Stewart, Britney Spears. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I Kim got it. Kardashian, get rid of that. Um, <laughs> Martha Stewart, you know, I think kissing an older woman, that maybe I could learn something. <laughs> You're going to marry Britney Spears? And then marry Britney Spears, just to say I did it. Okay, I like that. You could dance with her little like crazy dances. And oh, man. Yeah, she sure. might stab you while you sleep, but that's okay. And I love Britney. Oh, I just think she's a yeah. wild, she's a crazy wild something one. Something about women filled with rage I find attractive. <laughs> We're, we'll talk offline about that. <laughs> <laughs> it just cracks me up because it's true. I was gonna say you're laughing. It's true. I'm true. laughing because oh, I know man. so many backstories. All right, Devin, what would you say? Kim Kardashian, Martha Stewart, Britney Spears. This one's rough. This one's rough. I mean, keep in mind Martha Stewart looking s- super fine. She's, she's a babe. She was on the cover of Sports Illustrated. Say, she's pretty attractive for a yeah. woman, and she's done jail time, so you know she's like. <laughs> She's not playing around, man. That's true. Yeah, she's that's true. She ships season. She ships money. You know it. Season. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She oh don't. man, I don't know. I think, I, don't know. Um, I think I'd probably marry Martha Stewart. Okay, yeah. the house would be nice and tidy. I was gonna say, I'm she can cook. I mean, I'm gonna. Yeah. <laughs> she can cook. Like, oh, I'm gonna man. have to cook every night, so that wouldn't be bad. Amazing. Okay. Not too bad. No, I, and I mean, yeah. I mean, I think Martha Stewart. I probably marry. Okay. Um. Then you got Kim K and Britney Spears. I would probably have to kiss Kim K. Okay. And then I, I yeah, I'm gonna be the You're opposite. You're killing my hypothetical I'm, I'm wife. I'm killing your that's hypothetical. Right. Wife. <laughs> Britney's that's getting the boot. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. He likes. Pe- he's in touch yeah, with his emotions. She can hit you he one likes, more time, yeah. man. I'm okay. not. Yeah. We're not into him. it. Not Fair enough. <laughs> Okay, you guys, did you watch the games? Caitlin Carter, she's a fe- place for the fever now, right? She just like oh, yeah, signed yeah, yeah. with the fever, which is yeah. amazing. So yeah. we got Caitlin. Okay, we got her, Caitlin Jenner, and Dolly Partner. Mm-hmm. Jolly Dolly Parton. Excuse me. Uh, I'd probably get rid of Caitlin Jenner. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> who was the is. first one? Oh, Caitlin Clark. Clark. I said Carter. I meant Clark. And then who was the third? Dolly Parton. I'd marry Dolly. I'm going to piggyback your older woman. Caitlin Clark. Yeah. So Dang. you kiss Caitlin Clark. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. That's fine. As long as uh, I get Dolly. I mean, she has her own theme park. So <laughs> I was say, what's not to love like about that? This is why I love how yeah. men think. Like, I love this. Okay. Well, she's it's been great. a performer for, what, like 70 years or yeah. 60 it has years? has nothing to do with her dollies. Well, she's pretty talented, <laughs> I think. <laughs> nah, she is very she talented. Does. She has she her own theme on park. The, yeah, yeah she's her own theme park. They don't just give those to anybody. I love it. All right, Devin, who do you say? We got uh, Caitlin Clark, Caitlin Jenner, Dolly Part, Dolly Part. Man, uh, I I off Caitlin Jenner. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jenner. Okay. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Say that right. Too tall for you. Okay. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Too way too tall for me. Okay. Way yeah. too tall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, um, hmm. are you marrying Dolly or kissing Dolly? Caitlin Clark did just sign. I was going to say, I she's think local I'm, now. She I think I'm going to marry park. Caitlin Clark. Yeah. Okay. And okay. Then, yeah, There's I your girl. Dolly Parton, yeah. Okay. I like it. And lastly, here, this is just like a random question. If you guys, and summer's upon us, I know you like to go boating, you like to go out to the lake. If you could name your boat, what would you name it? 
<laughs> well, I actually had this conversation the other day. You did? Yeah. Well, the Bodie McBoatface or what? No, so the boat doesn't have a name, the new one. and um, you, ha- you have a boat now? Yeah. Oh. So playing off the... Um, you should put that on your profile. Playing no, off... Boat, ladies. Mackenzie's like, suddenly interested. <laughs> yeah. She's just, like, she's like now my summertime <laughs> is going to be spent with you. What are you naming it? Uh, mine McLovin? was just going to be no, no Worries. But oh, I like, no I like yeah, that. Yeah, No Worries. Oh, I like that. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. That's yeah. so you. Okay, I love it. Stamp of approval. Devin, what you got? Oh. <sighs> Double D's, D train. <laughs> I mean, you could do lots of fun stuff. Oh man, I don't know what what I would name a boat. Or uh, you might name it after your, your lady because you're such a romantic. I, I could, I could. Uh, summer, summertime. That, we could do that. Oh, that's her name cute. is Summer. Yeah, summer. Yeah, summer. He's making go. all the fellas. I mean, all the wit. That's yeah, really yeah, sweet. Do that. You like guys, this. thank you so much. Did you enjoy it? I appreciate it, man. Yes, I did very and they, much. Thank I you. learned a lot about a men. Lot of fun, yes. I, you know, this was true, true advice you gave here. So thank you. I appreciate you for being raw and real, thank and you, you guys are the me. best. All right, another episode of Blonde After Dark. That's a wrap. Mm-hmm.